it's us again. Um, sorry about the car videos. This is like the only chance we have to really film lately. We actually tried to film this at Mesa Verde. Uh, it was really windy. We finally found a spot. Blythe had fallen asleep. As soon as we stopped, boom, she woke up and started screaming. It, so. it was it was gonna not really work out anyway because it was so windy. So just yeah. pretend like behind us is still maybe creature, but not the camper, but like beautiful mountains or even the cliff dwellings. Yeah. Just Which pretend is actually, like that's behind us. Kind of there nice. are beautiful mountains yeah. over here. But um, so sorry that so, it's not that. But yeah. anyway. Um, so Mesa Verde in the off season. It's one of the parks that actually has like a true off season. Yeah. They stop basically a lot of their services and stuff. Yes. So the biggest thing that will be on season, off season, off season, you cannot take the tours of all the cliff dwellings, which is what you're going to see. Yeah, to like get up close and personal. Yeah, so you can still go to the overlooks, but here's the positive. Going in the off season, you can go to the overlooks and it's just like you and maybe a couple other people. Yeah, there are no crowds whatsoever. Yeah. It got busier later on in the day, but it still wasn't crowded. No, right? no. Yeah. I didn't think it was that crowded. But we've heard so, that Mesa Verde can be really crowded during yeah. off during the peak season. It's supposedly insane. Like these overlooks that we went on, there's like a couple hundred people there. And I don't even know how a couple hundred people would fit right. in this area, but so apparently they do. So I think it was good going in the off season for that reason, but we didn't get to do any of the tours. No. Which Eric really wanted to do, and so did so did I. But um, even the one place that's a self-guided tour, okay. that's closed for the season. So. There's two self-guided tours: Spruce Treehouse and Step House. Step House, you can't even drive to it. Spruce Treehouse, the path to get to it is closed because of falling rocks. Well, I think all of Spruce Treehouse, they've got falling rocks yeah. because of that. You know, so it's not just a path, yeah. it's actual. There's a the trail you is. can take, but you can't take the offshoot of the trail to, to get close to yeah. Spruce Treehouse. But you can still get a view of everything except for Balcony House, it's a, a ways away. One. It's tough. So what I did with Balcony House, they've got one of those little like binocular things that are set up. Um, you know, they usually put quarters in and stuff, but this one was free at least. Yeah. But I'm sitting there with my cell phone to <laughs> it, trying to, to like through. actually see the balcony. <laughs> So the Spruce Tree House and Cliff, Cliff, Palace, Cliff Palace, you get a real good view you of. You can get a good view of. Yeah. So, um, so entering the park, the visitor center is right in, like off the road when you get in, before you even pay to get into the park. Yep. The visitor center is really nice there. Do you want to push the button? So Park Mesa Natural Area. Yeah, we were like driving by and we were like, oh wow, what's that? We thought it was like someone's really then, nice expensive home. <laughs> yeah. And then you just start like, oh, my turn's up here. Oh, that's, that's the visitor it. center. <laughs> On the map, it looks like it's off a ways, but it's right there when you enter. So It's kind of actually before you actually enter the park. Yeah. Because you can go to the visitor center. Then after you leave the visitor center, you've got to drive through a booth. And pay. And that's where you pay, yeah. which was our first time using our national park like, pass. To pay to get into a park. Yeah. First time using the National Parks Pass. 
actually using it to get into a park. Bly's working on her junior ranger program in the back. Scribbling. Scribbling. Working hard. Hardly working. Not sure which. Supposed to do. Ooh, Ranger is not with us. She's at a puppy date. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hi, friend. That's your friend? Let's get a map ready. Yep. Alright, there's that for you. Thank you. Alright. So, um, go to the visitor center first. I, I noticed some people obviously skip the visitor center because there were people on the trail like asking us questions. Like, really? Yeah, like, what is all this stuff? Who are, like, why are you here if you don't even here? know where? Did you hear <laughs> yeah. goes, well, who did this? And we're like, <laughs> who did this? <laughs> it was my Uncle Bob. Like, he, he runs a contract company. He on, on the side <laughs> of the road and was like, where did this come yeah, from? Yeah. And he really, truly was asking us, like, what was all this? Who, who put this here? So we gave him a quick rundown. But anyway, Visitor Center will give you, uh, they have a huge map. The park rangers, during the off-season especially, it's important to go to the Visitor Center first. Obviously, I think you'd have to anyway. But they'll tell you which trails are open, which trails you can get to. And it's a huge park, too. So just driving through it can take, take a long, a long time. time. So he kind of gives you a time. Like if you go from here to yeah. here and you stop at all these places, it'll take you an hour. Which would be if you just really go from here to here, it's like 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. So he also gave us some good tips on what we could do with the toddler, like what would be easy to do with the toddler. For Mesa Verde, none of it is dog friendly. So we had a Rover sitter for Mesa Verde. Um, Cause it was a long day and that would have been tough yeah. for creature. And realistically, if you're just looking at a few of the things, you probably could bring the dog. Yeah, if it's cold, could've. leave him in the car and that kind yeah, of deal. We, but Because we, we did it for Chaco. But, yeah. Um, if you were going to do a, tr a tour, definitely do not bring your dog. Cause, yeah, because the tours yeah, are a couple hours long. long. Um, but so, went to the visitor center. He gave us some good tips on what we, what we should try and do. Um, and then we went from there to Cliff Palace, right? We saw Cliff Palace first. Yeah, Cliff Palace was first away. Oh it no, was... first we saw the, there's um, Oh yeah, we stopped at the highest point. So driving through the park, it's a long drive and it is steep, windy. Great roads. motorcycle drive. It's yeah, like Tail of the Dragon. Yeah, it's paved. <laughs> okay, the key here is it's paved. Radio reception. We're also, going kind of the black on the tire is that? That's just something in the chat. It's going to say maybe we might die. Good luck. You'll find another one. Oh, you want to find another one? Did you like the tunnel? You'll find another one. Okay. Again, bring a motorcycle. Eric says take your motorcycle. Wish so I had mine. <laughs> so uh, the, it's a, like a lot of scenic spots, the scenic overlooks, a lot of hikes you can take. The first place we stopped was... Um, well, the only overlook we stopped, because well, we didn't want to take a lot of time with the overlooks, was the highest point in the park. Yeah, that was really worth stopping at, though. It was Park Point Overlook. You're at like 8,600 feet or something like that, I think? So I don't think it's 8,600. I think it's... Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it is. I think it's, yeah. it's 8,600 feet, somewhere around there. Yeah, it was tough, man. Because it was 85 and some change or 86 and some change. wanted to be carried, and it's a little hike. Not, it's not a hike, but it's like a trail to get up to this overlook. And yeah. it It's was, not long, but it is. it does a little bit of steepness to it. But it was it. so windy and cold, yeah. and just that day that we were there being off-season, 
you're gonna get chilly, <laughs> chilly days, especially in the morning. Uh, so that was interesting because you take this little walk, it's a paved pathway, you get to the top and you can see four states. Yes, I didn't know where the states were. We pretended like we knew. You know like on a map where they got the lines? They, it doesn't exist in the real world. It's they lie to you. It's not there. They yeah. lie to you. But you can see, you know, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico from that spot, apparently, because you're that high up. And it is beautiful. Though. So we're at Park Point Overlook. I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, it's the highest point in all of Mesa Verde. It's over just over 8,500 feet elevation. So it's high. This is one of the spots, well, I think the spot, where you can actually see the four corners, basically. You can see all four states. Mm -hmm. I don't know which way is which, <laughs> but so let's good. just kind of yeah. pretend that's Utah, that's Colorado, that's Arizona, and that's New Mexico. No, I have, I have no clue. Totally yeah, wrong. It's probably the complete opposite. But so anyways, this, this spot here is <laughs> it's, spectacular. Yeah, it's it, awesome. It's really amazing. And you just It's really windy. How the landscape is just <laughs> carved out like it's amazing. Whole drive through Mesa Verde is gorgeous. Just the drive alone, it's breathtaking. So after the overlook, we hopped back in the car and went to Cliff Palace, checked Cliff Palace out. Another, it's like you, you park and it's another really short walk down to like an overlook. A couple basically. of stairs and stuff, nothing big. Yeah, though, it was so cool to see that. Eric really wanted to do the tour, so. Yeah, the going in the off season is kind of frustrating because you can see like the cliff dwellings, yeah. but it's like, sorry, you can't go in. You want to go down there so bad when you see it. Yeah. Um, but we still stayed there for a while just looking at it. And it's like pulling up to a store that just closed. Yeah, and you really need diapers. Well, I was going to say something like beer. beer. Yeah. Whatever. Because <laughs> literally, we missed it by a weekend. The weekend it before, we could have done a tour. It closed. The tours closed the week before. So, um, Cliff Palace is cool. If you spend some time there, you can really look around that overlook. And if you look across kind of like the canyon there, you'll see some smaller dwellings, cliff dwellings. Yeah, they're actually, the they're all over the place. I mean, obviously there's a big ones everybody wants to see. Cliff but Palace there's... is the big one. Like yeah. you've got to see Cliff Palace. It And it is like a palace. Blythe kept looking for Elsa and Anna. Anna, Elsa! Um, so take your time and take your time there and then after cliff palace we went to uh balcony do we do balcony house or did we do i think we went to the restaurant after that they have a restaurant in the park it's really nice actually which is run by who was it the prison company oh uh, aramark aramark yeah i looked the at food the was menu. good though it was good <laughs> But it reminded us of our, uh, uh, what do you call it, corporate days when we worked yeah. at a corporate company and that's who ran our <laughs> Who also cafeteria. apparently like ran them in the prisons or something like yeah. that or whatever. Good food though. And yeah. they had a nice little gift shop there. Um, so after after lunch, then we did, that's actually Spruce Tree House that we did there. We did Balcony House before. Yeah, that was there. So you have a balcony house tr like trail you can take, and that was somewhat of a hike. That's yeah, that's more of a hike than it. Who is it? Yeah. What happened? I see. Oh, it fell down. These ones look like they burnt. I think it was only in about a out. mile in, in and out, out or a mile and a half. It wasn't. But it's it's doable. It's just not. There's a lot of little overlooks. You stop. It takes it takes some time because yeah. you're stopping along the way. It's not strenuous whatsoever, but it is when you have a toddler on your back, though. Yeah. Balcony house is worth going to on that trail, but um, it, it's I, really small. Yeah, it, it's just <laughs> it's hard small to see. because it's really far away. Yeah. Yeah. 
but we hear that if you can get a tour of Balcony House during the season, that tour is really amazing. So yeah. when we will go back one day, and when we do, we will definitely do that tour. That's the one where you got to climb like the big ladder, ladder to get into it. Yeah. A... So uh, then after Balcony House, we went to the restaurant and did uh, Spruce Tree House. So Spruce Tree House. At Spruce Tree House, we almost completely missed because yeah. they always tell you the trail's closed. Yeah, we I didn't even look back for in it. The truck after yeah, and I caught it out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh, hey, there, there's another cliff dwelling, like, right there. Yeah. And so we went on the trail just, like, maybe 100 feet or so. It's actually the... You can see it from the parking lot. If you go down the parking lot yeah. and just look down behind the visitor center, or not the visitor center, but the ranger center there. Well, that's the museum there. Oh, that's right. That's, that's the museum. museum. That actually is worth spending some time at, too. Yeah. But so if you look across, you can see Spruce Tree House. So we went back and did that trail as far as we could. The after. Are you ready? What's the song? Load them up, da 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 da. It's some like cowboy song. Yeah. I don't know the words. You should know the words. Because it is, part of it is blocked off. But if you yeah. go a different way and continue, there's a petroglyph trail too. Yes. Off from that trail. But we didn't do that one because. Uh, there's a lot of ups and downs. It's like, and yeah. It's a couple miles. As Eric says, a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't do that one, but the. Um, Spruce Tree House is really cool to see because you're not that far away and you get a really Yeah, you're actually, view. you're pretty close to it from the trail. And it's a, it's a beautiful trail. You're um, probably actually, that's probably the closest one that you'll Yeah, I'm so glad you at. saw that. We, we were about to leave that. and I just caught it in the parking lot. Like, yeah. hey, they, let's just go down here really quick. <laughs> I yeah. know the trail's closed, but. I'm glad we did though. So the, the restaurant, the little cafe is in the same parking area as the museum. The museum is kind of basic looking but yeah, it, it kinda, is really informative it looks like an old library it did yeah like the basement library at your college before yeah. colleges became for-profit businesses but they really showed there were some spots in there that showed like how they actually made like pit houses and how they developed into the cliff dwellings and all that kind of stuff how they cooked yeah it was pretty neat i really liked that museum a lot so and i'm not a museum person but i really enjoyed that museum so uh, after the museum that's when we stumbled upon the trip that that the trail that eric found so i think we kind of cut that day short after that too not short because we were there from nine till three i think i think we picked up creature about four three thirty four o'clock yeah. yeah so we were there for a good chunk of the day and we didn't do any tours we did the hikes um, there's so much you can do there. So when we were doing our research on Mesa Verde, you basically want to spend a couple days there if you really want to get the full experience. Um, because there's not just the areas we went to. The park has, at a certain point on the trail, it splits off into two different angles, two yeah. different sides. Basically, you drive a long ways and that's where everything is and yeah. you can split off a couple different loops. and. All that kind of stuff. So the area we didn't check out was like step house. There's like a long house trail you can see where you can see a long house. There's so much to see and so much to do there. I if we had the time, I would have done two days. And if when if and when we go back uh, during the peak season, I don't want to go during the peak. I don't season, want to go during, but peak not the season off season. Either. But not yeah, because like, I want to take the maybe tours. a week before or when we go. So what was nice though, going in the off season is you can go through the park, see the park, and do all that stuff. And then if you go back during the, the on season, <laughs> I guess you call it, not necessarily peak yeah. season, but when they're doing the tours, then you could do a tour of Balcony House and Cliff, Cliff Palace. Palace in one day. Yeah. You can do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And then if you, you could, I guess, still do two days and go back and do Step House on your own. Yeah. yeah. Which I hear is also worth it. Well, you could probably do Step House kind of on the way out. Maybe it's, still, yeah. it's a long drive because you have to go all the way up, 
and then and all, the all the way, way down, down. Yeah. and then back all the way up because there's only one way in so it's a lot of driving and it's a lot of um like if you want to you want to have gas it's another place you want to fill up before you get there but you basically have that one's not bad because there's a town right there is there yeah because yeah, you weren't far right. out of the town that's right because that's where we drop there's not a ton time. in the town but, but there, there is, is stuff gas yeah so, but you're um, still in the park. It's a long drive. You don't want to get to the park on. And eat. then need gas. No, yeah. you, you do want to fill up before you get to the park. Yeah, because there's a long. So if you ever get a chance to do Mesa Verde during the off season, I recommend it only because you really do avoid the crowds, and you really do get to see those overlooks kind of by yourself. Like we were totally yeah. alone in a couple of them, completely. Yeah. Which I hear is not like that at all during the peak season. So check it out during off season. Oh, and Balcony House, I think is what it was. There's like the spot where you go to view it. Oh, yeah. Over to the right, there's a bench that says Inspire on it. You got to kind of go off the trail. It seems like you're going to walk around the cliffs and fall off, but you're not. <laughs> but don't do that. Um, you're, you're a ways away, but you can walk up. And there's, it's actually a better viewing it area is. from this little bench. Um, it seems like they don't want you to go there, though, because I'm guessing. But I mean, there's, there's like a trail that kind of cuts over to there. There's nothing to stop you from falling over, whereas no. the other overlooks, there's like a big yeah. fence. Um, definitely some cl uh, cliffs. There's just cliffs everywhere. So you want to keep your toddler close by. You know, I can see why they don't want animals there and stuff, too. So really cool place. So glad we went there. So we did Mesa Verde, Aztec, and Chaco, Col Chaco Culture National Historic Park. Which was your favorite? I like, even though I couldn't see the cliff dwellings, I like Mesa Verde. That's the one I'd want to go back to because I want to see Me the too. cliff dwellings. But, I mean, it was kind of the coolest, the cliff dwellings versus the other ones. The other ones, it's... Yeah. Chaco's I mean, it's hard cool to get to into. See. Yeah, Chaco's hard to get into. Aztec is great. I like Aztec because, because it was like, it's right there. Yeah, there was a Sonic within a mile. <laughs> He's really hung up on Happy that. hour, 2 to 4. Don't forget that with the Limeades. <laughs> Mesa Verde isn't that far, that hard to get to. It's yeah. just there's a lot of driving within Mesa Verde. Yeah, and plus Mesa Verde had its own, like, restaurant. There's actually a lodge there, too. Yeah. It's only open true. during, Forgot like, the peak that. season, but they have, like, a real lodge. They also lodge. closed the week before, I think. It yeah, it did. Mid -October it's April to mid-October. So that's their season, by the way, April to mid-October. The tours end, I think, the third week in October. Yeah. I'd have to say Mesa Verde, though, just because it was... Yeah kind of different them being actually built into the cliffs yeah. I you thought can that was do all three do all three but if you can't yeah well do aztec first, first really because sure. you get a little little aztec bit of the history and it's close too like yeah it's within an hour of Mesa about hour hour and a half away yeah so do aztec first because you get to see the reconstructed kiva and you get to see how the because the cliff cliff dwellings came later you know, yeah. it was like pit houses, then they started making kind of like the same structures that were in the cliff dwellings, but not in the cliffs. They really started and then they developed it into there. AD at that area in Mesa Verde. Yeah, kind of being nomadic coming in, yeah. and then they started building the structures and stuff. Around 850 is, again, when they think they started Cliff Palace and uh, Balcony House, those areas, just like in Ch Chaco, around 850. Uh, but they started settling there around, they think, maybe even earlier than 500. So that's when they started the pit houses, which is really cool about the tours through Mesa Verde is you get to see kind of the progression of their, um, you know, developing and settling in there. Anything else you want to add to that, mister? I don't know, I put my Sonic plug in. I'm really looking for a Sonic. There was one back there too that I could have gotten in with the trailer. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I need my Limeade. Utah. Yeah. Utah. Anyway, so Mesa Verde, definitely worth checking out in the off season. Just you don't get to take, you know, like we said, the actual tours yeah. of the cliff dwellings. You can still see them and you can actually see them without huge crowds, which is great. But definitely still worth seeing. Yeah. Okay. But I want to go back. Okay, we will. Alrighty, so I think that's it for this video. Yep. We'll see. These are kind of random. Sorry again with the car thing and the bumpiness and all that. Somebody hasn't bought me a gimbal yet. But we <laughs> we will well, see wait, you next also, time. Why did this thing?
Are you ready? Raise your hand. And say, I promise. I promise. To be. To be. A good junior ranger. A good junior ranger. Can you say it? By protecting. By protecting. Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde. And all national parks. And all national parks and taking your feet up. I also promise. I also promise. To spend more time. To spend more time. Playing outside. Playing outside. Each and every each day. Each and every day. All right, high five. High five him. Yeah. All right, you are now the new Junior Ranger. Let me see the National Park. You are the Junior Ranger badge, and I'll sign it to make it official. Congratulations. That was her fourth badge. This was her fourth one. So she did right? this. You do this. You turn it in in the museum. So. Well, you could do it at the visitor center too. Yeah. You can turn it in either with either These, one. I have to say, really quick, I'm just going to talk about the Junior Ranger program. I've got a bumper sticker too for the Junior Ranger program. Even though Blythe is only two and a half, I really do feel like it's getting her like more engaged and like. Not to mention too, we just found out adults can do it. Right. I thought it was for kids. I, I would have been doing out. it this whole I time. Doing it. I would have my own Junior Ranger badges. Been getting our own badges. <laughs> but we actually learn a lot too from the Junior Ranger program because, yeah. like, if you've never been to these places or these areas of the country, even you really that is kind of foreign to us so yeah so even if you don't that. have kids do the junior ranger program because we wish we did because right. you get a cool little badge so we're excited about that because we have many more to come that we'll be able we're, we're going to go to zion's next zion's and blythe will get to do that we there. were corrected it's not zion not zion zion's, zion's. so anyway uh, check out mesa verde and definitely do the junior ranger program with your kids yep so we will see you next time. Do all the YouTube-y stuff. Like, subscribe, and all that kind of a deal. And bye, guys.